Hello my friends, welcome to the YouTube channel of Kanadi Aviation Academy. I am your instructor, Captain Raj. So here, uh, in this video, we'll start with the solutions uh, for uh, the test paper one, which was for general navigation one. So uh, let's get into it. Let's start with the very first question. Very first question here we have is, what is the shape of the earth? Very basic question. Uh, what is the shape of the earth? As we have already studied uh, in back in our school days that the shape of the earth is a perfect sphere. But it is not the actual answer. Uh, the correct answer to this question is the earth is an oblate spheroid. It is not a perfect sphere. You can see here this blue dotted line resembles a sphere. But our earth is bulging from here. It's bulged out. You can see here it's bulged out from here. Let's see how. So this is an oblate and this is a prolate. Our earth resembles this figure, correct? Our earth here, you can see, it resembles this figure, oblate. So this thing is a perfect sphere, but our earth is bulging from the equatorial axis. You can see around the equatorial axis, it is bulging. Why is it so? Because inside the core of the earth, uh, there's a lot of uh, molten minerals, lava, magma and our earth is rotating on its own axis so the earth is rotating like this on its uh, on its axis right and because of this rotation because of the centrifugal forces all the magma and lava inside and the other minerals inside the core of the earth they tend to throw outside and because of that the earth has bulged out around the equatorial axis so uh, this was the answer to this question let's jump to the next question next question here we have is the shortest distance between any two points on earth surface is what and the correct answer is great circle it is not a rumb line most people tend to confuse with this question so the shortest distance on the earth surface between any two points is a great circle let's see what is a great circle first a great circle is the largest circle which can be drawn on the surface of the earth and the plane of that circle divides earth into two equal hemispheres if i draw a great circle here then it will divide the earth into two equal hemispheres. If I draw it like this from here, then it will divide the earth into two equal hemispheres. Also, the plane of that circle will pass through the center of the earth. Uh, you can see here, uh, this has divided the earth into two, two hemispheres. And th this is a small circle. This is not a great circle because the, uh, this circle has not divided the earth into two equal hemispheres, correct? Now, uh, on a spherical model of the earth, as you can see here, this thing is a spherical model of the earth. This is a spherical model of the earth. And this is a flat model of the earth. Correct? So on a spherical model of the earth, a great circle is always a straight line. And on a flat model of the earth, a great circle is always a curved line. All the aircrafts in the air always follow great circle tracks because great circle distance is the shortest distance between any two points. Correct? As you can see here, on a curved model of the earth, a great circle is a straight line and this line my friends is shorter than this line this is called rumb line distance and this is called great circle distance correct so this is all about great circle let's jump to the next question next question here we have is these vertical lines which we have here uh, running from north pole to south pole are what so these vertical lines are meridians these are not longitudes these lines may also be called lines of longitude but these are not longitude let's see what meridians are meridians are the locus connecting the points of equal longitude correct so so this line if you travel along this line you'll be following 010 as you can see here it's written here 010 degree west longitude the longitude will be same if you fly on this line so this is a meridian so meridian uh, they run in north south direction and they measure distance along west or easterly track correct as you can see here they cross the equator at right angles all these meridians all these meridians consider this as the equator they cross the equator at right angles also they tend to converge at the nearest pole these are the halves of great circle so let's consider this gimbal as a meridian so this will be its anti-meridian, correct? So this meridian and its anti-meridian, both of them will, uh, will form a great circle. Hence, this meridian will be a half of a great circle. 
yeah that's all about meridians let's jump to the next question next question here we have is parallel of latitudes except the equator are what as you can see here all these parallel of latitudes all these concentric circles including the equator all of them are ram lines so uh, as you can see just like this all these circular lines concentric circles these are parallel of latitudes even this 0 degree north south 0 degree north south which is equator this is also a ram line on a spherical model of the earth a ram line will be a curved line see this is the ram line here and this was a great circle correct so on a spherical model of the earth a ram line is a curved line and on the flat model of the earth a ram line is always a straight line so this was all about ram, uh, parallel of latitudes and ram lines let's jump to the next question next question here we have is for navigation and mapping purposes which is the current icao standard the correct answer is wgs84 okay so what is this wgs84 it stands for world geodetic system 1984 this thing is the datum for all the navigation and mapping purposes uh, even for cartography for geodesy even for gps this thing is the datum so there were earlier a lot of systems introduced uh, we had wgs60 we had wgs72 uh, we had wgs66 but now we followed wgs84 and this wgs84 coordinate system is geocentrically positioned with respect to the actual center of the earth correct so this is all about wgs84 you, uh, you don't need to uh, know anything uh, more about this thing let's jump to the next question next question here we have is geocentric and geodetic centers they coincide at they coincide at either poles or equator and the maximum difference between them is at 45 degree north and south correct let's see how so let's consider this as as the earth okay my bad let's consider this as the earth very bad okay so uh, these are the poles north pole and this is a, this is the south pole and this is the equator okay so as you can see this is the geographic center of the earth the actual center of the earth is this and this is the geodetic center this is geodetic and this is geographic okay so the maximum difference between them lies at 45 degree north and below here 45 degree south so the uh, maximum difference between them is at 45 degree north and 45 degree south and they coincide at poles and equator okay so let's jump to the next question next question here we have is find antipodal of 063 north and 010 east very easy question antipodal points are the point are diametrically opposite points as you can see here these two points are diametrically opposite to each other and these uh, points are known as antipodal points all all other diametrically opposite points like like these two points this and this they are antipodal points so for our question our question was about 063 north and 010 east for this particular point the antipodal will be 063 south and 170 west how so this thing as you can see is in the northern hemisphere correct so its antipodal will obviously will be in southern hemisphere until unless it is at the equator correct so uh, 063 north the antipodal of this point will be 063 south the uh, latitude antipodal latitude of this point will be 063 south correct now talking about longitude 010 east okay let's consider this as the front face of the earth and the other face will be the back side okay so uh, as you know that this uh, the total will be 360 degrees correct if you travel from here if you start and you'll come back you'll cover total 360 degrees so from here if you want to go here it will be 90 degrees and then from here again 90 degrees if you'll cover these two will be antipodal this point and this point will be antipodal correct so this is 180 degree in total so from here if you'll travel 180 degree to either sides either in the westerly direction or in the easterly direction in both sides you'll end up to its antipodal point so uh, let's start let's go in the westerly direction so suppose this this point here we have is 063 north 
let's consider here here we have is the prime meridian this is the prime meridian so this is 0 1 0 east and now from this point let me select another color okay now from this point you'll have to travel 180 degrees in the westerly direction 180 degrees in the westerly direction so so from here if you travel travel 10 degrees in the westerly direction you'll come up at 0 degree east west which will be the prime meridian itself and then if you travel 170 degrees further in the westerly direction you'll come up at 170 west so hence this is the answer so the answer uh, so the antipodal points of uh, for uh, 060 north and 010 east will be 060 south and 170 west that's all uh, for this question let's jump to the next question next question here we have is given that the compression value of the earth is 1 is to 297 and this uh, length of semi major axis is 678.4 kilometers what will be the length of the semi minor semi minor axis of the earth so uh, let's see the total difference between the polar and the equatorial diameter of the earth as you can see here is 43 kilometers 12757 is this visible okay so 12757 is the equatorial diameter and and 12714 is the polar, polar diameter so this is equatorial diameter and this is polar diameter now the difference between these two is 43 kilometers remember these two are diameters right so the, the difference between the radius will be half of this correct so the half of uh, 43 will be 21.5 correct so so the answer to this question will be you just have to subtract 21.5 from uh, this equatorial uh, radius so if you subtract 6378.4 if you subtract 21.5 kilometers it will be 6356.9 kilometers and hence this is the correct answer that's all it was very easy let's jump to the next question next question here uh, we have is a graticule is the name given to what a graticule is the series of uh, lines of longitude and uh, latitude on a chart on any chart or a map so these are the parallel of latitudes as we have already discussed or we can say lines of latitude because on this line you will be traveling on same latitude and this thing as lines of longitude or meridians so if we will add these two or we will club this, these two we will get graticule so graticule is nothing graticule is the name given to the series of longitude and latitude lines on any chart or any map so that's all about graticule let's jump to the next question and the last question uh, we have uh, in today's video which is radio wave follows which path and the answer to this question is radio wave follows great circle path why great circle path because see uh, in a radio wave you need a transmitter and a receiver okay so you need a transmitter and you need a receiver a radio wave travels from transmitter and it reaches the receiver correct and from the transmitter the transmitter transmits in all the directions in all possible 360 direction it transmits correct it will transmit everywhere and all these transmissions will follow a straight line path to the receiver wherever the receiver will be suppose if it's here it will tra uh, travel in a straight line to the receiver if uh, suppose the receiver is here then it will travel in a straight line to the receiver so and and a straight line on a curved surface or uh, on the uh, spherical model of the earth a straight line is a great circle as we've already seen uh, since radio waves spread out in all directions they go in a straight line between transmitter and receiver and a great circle route is a straight line on a curved surface so as you can see here all these ground waves they follow the curvature of the earth and they follow the great circle track to reach the receiver that's all from my side for today's video i hope all you future aviators have enjoyed this video if you have enjoyed it please like uh, our video and if you have any uh, any uh, questions or any queries any doubts related to this video or this topic you you can uh, comment down in the comment box uh, also please subscribe to our channel and help us grow and remember 
If God wanted us to fly, they would have given us wings, but they have not. Canard will give you wings. Okay, that's all from my side. See you in the next one.